It's my birthday. Yeah. And um, I am going to go on a private jet and then maybe fly some planes. So this episode is kind of a proof of concept about something we're trying to do with the community to invite you to come out, fly the Warbirds with us. That's my friend John. He was here today too. And also help build the RV-14 that we're working on at the hangar. John picked us up in his Meridian and it was Sarah's first ride in a small plane. So lots of fun happened in this episode. When we start getting into these clouds straight ahead, it's going to be a little bumpy. Sarah, are you okay with that? I'm totally fine with it. All right, good. Could we make it bumpier? <laughs> I, I like Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> She's a thrill seeker. Yeah, I'm with you. Are, are you joking about those sound bites? Because I've got a thousand of those. <laughs> this is going to be done in like 10 minutes, guys. There's the, that's the sound bite. That's the sound bite. Because <laughs> we're so awesome at this. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this one, starting with the parting YYZ in a Meridian. You good? Yeah. Any questions? Good. Um, do you spin this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That's, That's the kind of day we're gonna have. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sarah's a lot of fun. She's Brock's girlfriend, and he's joining us today as well to film as we depart from Toronto, Canada's busiest airport, and head to Windsor. It took half an hour to taxi across this massive airport, and the cameras that I had rigged got cooked. And we are back. I was really on board managing the departure with the iPad, and this could have definitely been an IFR status vlog. But this episode also had a lot of building in it, so it could have been a build vlog. So I'm just going to combine everything and make it into an awesome episode, because it really is. I want to invite as many of you guys out here as I can to fly these warbirds, see the RV-14 we're building, see what it's like to be a part of this world. Basically, what we want to do is have as many community members as possible come out and be a part of this thing. So long term, anybody that wants to come can just shoot me an email, we'll get you into the list and we'll figure out how to coordinate getting you out here to Windsor. Short term, we're gonna do a contest, we're gonna fly you out, airfare will be covered, and hotel for a weekend out here in Windsor. So uh, this will be awesome times, if you wanna fly some warbirds and help us work on the RV-14, just kinda hang out. Fantastic, loved it. So John was nice enough to give us a whole pile of super handy tools and things we're gonna need, like Clecos, and we got a pneumatic squeezer, grinder, what else we got in there? Oh yeah, you never whole have pile. too many bucking bars. Yeah, yeah bucking bars. This is, the, this is the shit right here. Right here, okay. Yeah, that's the so shit. this is a bucking bar, and I know enough now to know how important it is to have all kinds of these, different sizes, good solid weight. Right. Do you have any tungsten ones in here? Or are these all no, steel? No, this, so, this is before tungsten. Oh, yeah. So the new yeah. hotness is, uh, <laughs> tungsten is the thing, because right. tungsten is a super dense, it's, it'll be the same weight, but like way smaller, right? Right, right. And the idea is that this is what goes behind where you're trying to rivet and it kind of smashes, so you got to kind of stick. So there's all these different shapes. I mean, so he's got like this, like it's like a miniature anvil. I mean, that's what they are, right? Yeah, They're yeah, like teeny tiny is. anvils yeah. from your uh, coyote and roadrunner days. There's an anvil, but a tiny one. So we got a whole bunch of these in here, and it's going to be super handy because tools are definitely a challenge. Yes. So yeah, man, really appreciate that. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm going to intercut some learning nuggets from this flight. Here's the first one. All right, so we are back with cameras. It's funny, like, we had that conversation about you have experience with cameras failing a fair bit. Oh, big time. I've got a lot of experience running these things, and I've never had them shut down like that, but this windshield is so low profile. Right, right. We were thinking, is it your Hero 7s? But I've never had a 5 fail, and 2 went down before we even took off. Wow. But they did get pretty hot. I had that happen once in California in a 182. Uh, both iPads, both GoPros down. Wow. And you know, you talk about, and that was the same deal, right? kind of on climb out, the worst possible time. <laughs> okay, the airplane is uh, tucked in. And here's a fun fact. I left the uh, iPad on the ramp while we were tuck- putting her away. That's what happens when you cook an iPad. So uh, keep that in mind. You always have a backup because this thing can, it'll probably take 10 minutes for this to uh, come back. I, I had four flight on my phone as a backup. However, it wasn't, it wasn't set up. Right. The lesson there is, a backup is only a backup if you actually have it set up. Right. So, I mean, the idea is like, iPads fail when they get cooked, so you gotta make sure your backup isn't in a place to get cooked. Right, right. And it's charged and it's packed. All right, so status report. Okay, so this is the first piece done. The next piece will be uh, the horizontal stab and we're, we're starting to hammer the skins on the uh, horizontal stab now. And you start that by installing these two nose ribs 
right here. Uh -huh. we've, we've got the left side done. This is the right. Then you drop the uh, spar and all the uh, in-spar ribs in. And the fuse goes fairly fast, especially this one, because there's no launch rods to bend or anything like that. My, my, I had the, the fuse I had to jig. This is back when you had to jig stuff, and not everything was match drilled like it is now. Was there a lot of work building the jig? Yeah. Yeah, for somebody that wasn't a big wood woodworking guy, it was a lot of work. And I, I was fortunate. I had a friend. You start doing this, you find there's another there's a whole community of crazy people like you. And they all want to help. So they would just descend on my house. Is this the newest kit that you will have seen then? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. What do you want to do today then? Okay, well, uh, right now, just this morning, we hammered the, uh, the tip ribs in the uh, left skin. So those rivets are all good to go and uh, ready to drop the spar in. So now we're gonna do the same thing on the right skin. I'm gonna call it one at a time. I'm still pretty new at this, so I find it stressful to rivet skins. Okay, push and hit it. Again. And hit it. Good rivet. Okay, next one. Okay, now just give me a squirt, just a brrr, just a little burst. All right, good rivet. Okay. Brock, you can see the rivet mashing from you. It's yeah. mashing? You can see it you, as he's bucking it. You can see there's a really cool shot. Okay, and push. And hit it. Just a touch now, just a touch. Just a squirt. Hit it? Yep. All right, one more like that. Squirt. Yeah, that's good. Okay, next one. I was busy working with Perry, so Brock pulled John aside Push. to get his backstory. <laughs> Just a you guys gonna be doing that all day? All right, talk to me. So, I'm John Weisswasser. I am a, uh, a pilot, of course, because I'm, I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm also a, uh, a Vasco surgeon and a musician. And um, the fact that I uh, uh, built an RV which is uh, something I finished in 2004, an RV8, drew me to Steve. So uh, I reached out to him, and uh, in my quest to always direct and support people who I admire and think are doing something important, I, uh, I offered to donate basically all these tools that I had uh, that I had used for building the RV. Um, and expertise? And expertise, uh -huh. and uh -huh. uh, yeah, just, uh, just whatever I could to help them. So after reaching out to him, we tried to figure out ways to get these things here. And, uh, and I just thought, you know, what, what better reason than to meet him in Toronto and, and make a trip down to the shop in the Meridian. What I do is so community driven. I mean, right. I wouldn't know you if I didn't do the channel. Right. right. Uh, I wouldn't know Dave. Like, when, this, this whole thing is pretty close to me really, right? right? But I did not know it existed because they don't do a great job marketing. I would not have known it existed unless Dave was watching the channel and said, I see you like Warbirds. Do you want to buy some Warbirds? I was like, hell yes. How's that? How, how do right. we do that? Right. Because I had tried. There's a couple organizations near, which I had gone and done the ground school in 2001. It was a weekend course. Yeah. I was, uh, I thought I knew stuff. I, at that point, I had my license for like six years. Yeah. At that point, you think, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. I got 150 hours or whatever. I'm, you know, that was 2001 wow. or 2002-ish. And I did the course and they slammed down the maintenance manual for the Harvard, which is like this thick. Essentially what it was, was this is a history lesson of a thing you'll never do. I see. Kind of the way I felt when I did that course. Like I didn't have tailwheel at the time. I didn't understand uh, it wasn't just a checkbox. I see. Right. I was like, I'll get tailwheel and then I can learn how to fly the Harvard, right? right here, 35, how many hours did it take you to get to the point where they let you solo it? I did my checkout in just under five hours. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, I showed up, but so when I came, when I went to Windsor at that point, I now had 15 more years of flying. Right. I had tailwheel. Right. And, and how many tailwheel hours do you think you had? Um, I don't even think I had 50, wow. maybe 50 by then. Right. But the difference was that that organization looked at it differently. Ron, who you, hopefully you'll get to meet, was 85 at the time. He's now 86. Still okay. flies everything. Uh huh. Like he was too young for World War II, but right after in the mid 40s, right. he was an instructor at the Air Force. Right. And uh, he basically has the attitude that if you have good feet, I can teach you to fly anything. Right. So he doesn't look at those airplanes the way some of the other museums do. Where it's like, whoa. If you're not ATPL with like 5,000 hours, you're not touching them. I see. From his perspective, it's like some of those guys who have tons of experience are actually a, a deterrent because right. he has to retrain them how to use their sure. feet. Right. All right, did I redeem myself with that one? Yeah, that was good. It's all about feeling it and sticking rudder. There's not, like, 
having this type of experience is great, but it does not help you land right. a Harvard or a Stearman. Right. Sure. The joke about the Harvard is when it touches down, it's going to do something. Right. All and, tail wheel, and all tail draggers are like that for the most I, I think. Push. Hit it. Today was definitely a confidence builder for me. Good rivet. Okay, next. I started to feel like I could actually rivet skins without damaging something irreparably, but it's still scary. It's not really straight. Feel that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. If it doesn't sit right, then you want to ream it with the uh, with the number forty drill. So take it out. Just straight. Nice through. and square. Nice and square to everything. Yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. Now reset the rivet. And what's the story with deburring? When you do that, you don't need to deburr. Well, it it already has been deburred, but sometimes running the clecos in and out multiple uh -huh. times will create a little chip. Okay. All right. Now push. And hit it. There you go. Okay, good. So I have an RV8 that I finished in 2004. Um, I had had no building experience. I knew how to build IKEA furniture. Literally, that's it. And you know, the instructions always sort of stink, and there's always screws and hardware left left over at the end. This was someone else's idea, but I just took pictures of it at Osh, and then like literally measured exactly where all the panels hit different rivets. I took my surgical boards on September 11th, the September 11th, and they let you know right away when you pass. And as soon as I found out I passed, I called Vans and ordered a kit. And two and a half years later, I finished it in the basement of a house in DC. So I flew that for many years and continue to fly it and love it. It's a, it's a wonderful airplane. It's funny, when I fly the RV, I always brief myself. Alpha, descend one two thousand. Cross one two miles east of pickup level. Okay, uh, one two thousand and uh, one two miles east of pickup level nine delta alpha. Okay, so the way you do this. Nine delta alpha altimeter two nine or eight two. Two nine or eight two nine delta alpha. The way you do this, you go to pickup. We're gonna we're gonna set twelve miles, right? And we want to be at uh, twelve thousand. Uh, so I started to try to write that clearance down. And I was like, how do I write, even write this down? Vertical track. It's like twelve. She she said. Cross pick up, cross 12 miles before pickup. Well, we, she wants us level uh, 12 miles before. Cross pickup level at 12,000. Oh, so that's a tough one, man. If you didn't have this kind of technology, how would you? Oh do that? my God! What I would, I mean, you could sort of start trying to do the math in your head, and there are all the formulas. And not, quite honestly, I don't even remember what they are. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm so excited to have this type of technology in the RV that I'm building. Oh, it's gonna instrument rating is. If this, with these tools, though, I mean, the, the airplane I'm going to do my flight test in has got a Garmin 430 and no ADF, so I want uh -oh. to deal with NDPs. Yeah, good. <laughs> that's smart. I planned that on purpose. Yeah, that's smart. I got through the written test somehow managing to do my ADF crossing and the intercepting and all that insanity. You ready? Yeah. It's in. Oh, <laughs> now. What does attract you to what, Steve's uh, doing? to what Steve's doing? I mean, first of all, anybody who's seen his work knows his uh, not only just attention to detail, but he has a natural knack for making something visually appealing and interesting. I'm still feeling that kind of overwhelmed, like, know, oh my God know. feeling. It's, it's, but, but seeing the energy coming out of you is pretty cool. Uh, and what I really like. Um, well, it's two things really. One is is that he's bringing attention to a segment of the aviation community, multiple segments of the aviation community, that otherwise have no other outlet. This is the most efficient way to get carpal tunnel syndrome. Pilots in general tend to age out. Like this is a way to really freshen the the interest. So if you want to come out here, help us build this airplane for a weekend, fly some warbirds. I'm inviting anyone to do that. We've got basically 18 months left of this build. So. It brings back such fond memories. So we're putting a list together. We're inviting as many people as we can to come out. I want to tell your story. I want to put you in a video if you want to be in one. If not, cool. It's basically as many people in the community as I can get out here is what I'm looking to get done. The other thing is, is that he just does a fantastic job at doing it in a, in a way that gives you, as a pilot, uh, a, a nugget of information or some tip or some insight uh, that somebody just sticking a bunch of GoPros on a plane and flying it around doesn't. Put it in there. That's right. Now squeeze the trigger. Okay. 
Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Feels like I'm having a force. There you go. You're in. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. So that's one of the tools you lent us? Nice. Pneumatic Clico squeezer. Can you see can you see the Clico go through the hole and pinch? All right, so insert the front spar assembly into it and Clico it to the no nose ribs, okay? So the front spar has now been Clico to the two little nose ribs. Yes. And then like, oh, this trigger, and then, yeah. You hey, Clico. You, you, you that's Clico. pretty satisfying. Right? I like it. So you could do this like for three years, right? Oh my God, <laughs> can I do another one? Give us the like elevator pitch. Your grandfather was an aerospace engineer and your dad was a pilot, correct? Isn't that awesome? Sarah's got a really cool aviation wow. family story. Yeah. Your dad flew beavers? Um, yeah, and uh, Comanches and, and uh, CBs. Wow, CB, that's a fun little thing. Right, the ones that land on the water? Yeah, they're really weird looking. Yeah, they look like a tadpole, kind of. I've always wanted to do this. Where'd you do that from? <laughs> <laughs> I like this show better than Flight Chats. This <laughs> weird. Can this be like a side? No. Project yeah. battery. You're just jealous you don't get to click over Here, let me hold the camera. Good? Does it feel good? It feels so good. You really I did, like, Is this of, filming like, right now? It's rolling. So I had several objectives today, one of which obviously was to get some work done on the airplane. Another one was to capture a day in the life of the Yellowbirds. I'd also hoped to possibly get a currency flight in, but my brain was fried after working, so I sat this one out and just helped with filming. Have you been in open cockpit before? Uh, once so long ago, I don't even remember. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a good time, man. Yeah. These guys fly tight. Yeah. And they're solid. They do this all the time. This is what's cool about this place, is they practice this so that they're tight. And then when they do flyovers and stuff, right. it's like they're right ready to go. Right. Okay. Good luck. Thanks. Um, what do you say to uh, pilots? What's like, you know, start breaking leg. Go fly. <laughs> Touch the sky. Maybe that one. You should start that one. Contact! So I'm not kidding when I'm saying we're inviting you to come out here and do this. There's going to be a link in the description or you can visit flightshops.com for more info. And I want to thank the supporters and sponsors for helping us create this content. It's a lot of work, but it's really rewarding to do this. And again, basically everything I do is directly because of the community. So giving back is awesome. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. It's the next day. How do you feel? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good answer. <laughs> I feel like I had a great time, mm -hmm. but um, I got um, a little bit of a sensitive stomach. I'm just gonna have a few more of these. Yeah. Are you worried about any the turbulence? Am I worried about it right now? Yeah, that we're gonna, that we're gonna feel yeah. some turbulence. Like I love it, in my mind. <laughs>